producing a show with such a high rating will mean a great deal to me personally and also to the entire creative team for Simba's production. Um, it will be like a validation of our hard work and uh, determination and also a passion to bring such a great story to life on stage. It's also motivation uh, to help us continue to improve our craft and uh, to deliver exceptional performances to audiences. It's quite a challenge uh, having to teach children of that age, um, getting them to memorize, learn all those songs. Um, the lyrics are quite elaborate and bulky that even some of the senior school students were finding them quite challenging, having to memorize all those words, etc. But what we did was that we incorporated uh, the script, the story, and the songs into the day-to-day -day curriculum for the children that they would learn in other subjects as well, and also in the music lessons, we made it part of the lessons. So it just wasn't in choir practice, it was also when they're coming in on a Monday, a Tuesday, all throughout the week, they'll be learning something that is related to the story. So that made it a bit easier for them to memorize, know the songs. And we also had uh, teachers um, playing some of the songs in class during the relaxed free periods, uh, during break times, and things like that. So that helped a lot. Moving on to junior school, um, during their assemblies, uh, we would then come in with all the music teachers, music department, putting our hands together, teaching them uh, the songs during assembly, a section where we call hymn practice. We then had to adopt or, or take that, those slots and make them into play song practices. Simba's story is just not a story. As a literature teacher, I'd say that every play, every story, every movie has a moral. There's always a life lesson. And the one that I want to zero in on is kindness. At the Heritage School this term, interestingly enough, our theme has been the theme of kindness. So in Simba's story, we find that we've got an interesting character called Scar, Mr. Know-it-all, cocky, Pride is the middle name for Scar. Scar is cruel, he's evil, he kills his own brother. And the end result for him is not good, it's bad. So we see good versus bad. We see good overcoming bad. And the moral that we can teach to the children is that good always overpowers bad. Kindness always makes a way even in a dark, dim world. And when we see the resurrection of Simba after he's had his encounter with Mufasa, good flourishes. The green comes and dissipates the barrenness. So kindness, goodness, virtue 
are some of the life lessons that we glean from Simba's story. So it's just not all pomp and fun and Timon and Pumba and hyenas and all of that. There is a moral, there are morals to Simba's story. Let's take it again, right? Let's everyone be in position. Let's take our positions. You're holding your flute. Okay. And the curtain is opening and the music starts. Okay, so um, when I was told that I was going to be part of, or when I was approached to be part of the production team for Simba Story, um, I think initially I was excited because obviously drama is something that I'm passionate about. Um, and so when reality sank in that we're going to be dealing with hundreds of children, um, you know, trying to look for the proper, the correct, uh, you know, the correct person or personality for each role, um, I think I became a little bit worried. Um, but because of, I suppose, the excitement and the fact that I've never actually um, directed or helped to direct something of this kind of ma magnitude, you know, I, I, I got excited again and yeah, um, we'll just uh, see how it goes for now. But uh, it's, it's, it's been hard work, but it's fine. We will get there. I'm still pretty excited because I think the kids are going to do really well. Some of our biggest challenges in creating the set design, costumes and props that we faced um, were balancing the creative vision of the production with practical considerations such as cost indications, safety and feasibility. Another challenge was also adapting to changes in the production schedule which required last minute adjustments due to the cost having other activities and commitments such as sports, academics and other various extracurricular activities. We also faced a challenge in ensuring that all elements of the production were consistent with the overall aesthetics and tone of the show. When I first heard that we were going to do Simba's story, a rendition of a Lion King, an adoption of a wrong, I was like, wow, what a challenge. And in that moment, I was quick to remind myself that champions always welcome a challenge. I said, bring it on. had to face the approach because of the complexity of the music. We needed to communicate with the music ourselves as music teachers so that when we teach the mass choir, which is every child, we know exactly 
what the emotion is behind the music, how the arrangement is, and how we were going to then do it our own way. Arts are crucial. They are key to life. They are the ingredients to life. Imagine a life of math, history, English, computer science, and no performance. What a dull, morbid, monotonous life that would be. I believe that performance, <laughs> I believe I'm performing right now. The eyes come out, life comes out, and I believe life is for the living. So when we talk about drama, when we talk about theater, when we talk about acting, that is that extra kick to life, that extra flavor to life. The creativity, the creative juices come to the fore. So performance arts are key to learning. We also get to connect with children more through dance, through song, through being crazy, through acting, because as a director, it's important that sometimes you lay away the dignity in quotes and show them how it can be done. And the moment you do that, the relationship with the child is stronger and formidable. So performance arts, it's unfortunate that not all parents buy into performance arts, but I believe as a country, we are chatting our way towards more children buying in and more parents buying in into performance arts. Because I believe that when a child is born, they're gifted differently. And for some, it's the performance. And a life can be forged from that. So definitely they play a critical part. I mean, think about all the laughter that Shakespeare gives us. Think about all the deep lessons we get from Charles Mungoshi. What would we do with our performance arts? Um, so working with the cast, and again, because there's so many roles that are involved, um, we have so many different uh, animals. We have, you know, the main the main cast. We have the not so main cast, and um, it's it's been a little bit of uh, a tough journey trying to motivate them, to encourage them, to get people to learn their lines. But what we've really done, the first thing that we we've done, or um, you know, as 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 the production team, we made sure that they all watched The Lion King first of all, right? made them watch the movie and then after the movie we then watched the Broadway uh, together just so that we can get a feel of how it is to be like on stage um, and to just perform in front of people and so after that uh, we used a lot of the break times it was almost every day break time lunch time we made sure that anyone who was able to would just come through and you know we would go through the lines together go through some of the acting together and all of that uh, and so I think it's worked out pretty well because everyone now knows their lines, obviously, and that's the biggest thing for us. Uh, the other thing as well, trying to get them to embrace their, um, their character. So, for example, we have somebody like Scar, Scar, who is a very sarcastic kind of character. Um, and we picked him very, you know, it was when, when we picked the, the, the person who's playing that role, it was done on purpose because he's kind of, he gives off that kind of aura. So sarcastic, you know, kind of cool, laid back. And then we have somebody like Mufasa, who's a totally different character as well. We have the young Simbas. And we chose to have four different Simbas because, you know, um, we feel like each one sort of embraced a different sort of, um, you know, uh, time. Uh, that Simba or time or period that Simba was going through at that point in time. And so we just tried to get them to, you know, when you're at home, uh, why don't you sort of act like Mufasa? So we're saying be regal, you know, um, 
posture, the way that you speak, you know, the way that you act, the way you talk to people, and also just, you know, practice, and we encourage them to, to practice in, in, the, in front of the mirror. Um, a lot of, I'm sure a lot of these guys were talking to themselves a lot at home, but, uh, you know, um, I think that's how we've kind of managed to, to encourage and to just say, you know, this is, you know, let's look at the, the end goal, let's take the end goal in mind at this point in time. And so um, I think that's how we've managed to do it, and I think everybody's prepared and ready now. Never go there. Those are beyond our borders. But I thought a king can do whatever he wants. <laughs> yes, but there's a lot more to being king than having your way all the time. Some of the strategies that we put in place for Simba's story to be a success include spelling out responsibilities and duties to the T. We made sure that every I was dotted, every T was crossed. Regular communication among the production crew was very important. Weekly meetings, whether it was online or in person, were key. I think planning in advance was also one of our strengths. The children knew their lines way before the production day. Sometimes in the corridors, Audia Mufasa singing away, Scar drooling over there, Hyena laughing away, when they would travel for sport, be it rugby, be it hockey, they would go with their scripts. They would go with their lines. They were watching the movie. One of the things that we had to do as adults is fall in love with Simba again. Not that we ever fell out of love with Simba. Who wouldn't? Lion King is the Lion King after all. But watching that play, watching the movie over and over again and being in tandem with it made this a success. Why, if it isn't my big brother descending from on high to mingle with the commoners? So Rabbi and I didn't see you at the inauguration of Simba. That was today? Ah, oh, I feel simply awful. Must have slipped my mind. Yes, well, as slippery as your mind is, as the king's brother, you should have been first in line. I was first in line until that little hairbo was born. <laughs> that hairbo is my son and your future king. First of all, let me just say what a fantastic performance we had. Um, this has been a, a, great, a great pleasure in being involved in it. and. Uh, Obviously, what some of the things we had to do and to get ready for this big production, um, as you can imagine, doing a production for the whole of the, the school. So we're going from infants, juniors and seniors. We had to design a stage, something that was uh, going to encompass everybody, but also have an area where we could have all the, the seating. So the basic design of it was uh, put into place by um, looking at amphitheatres, first of all. And then from having looked at the amphitheatres, we then looked at how we'd make that out of scaffolding and then from that we then designed the stage um, the main set um, we liked to have two stages begin because there was lots of things happening different dances different uh, things going on as you've seen and then having the choirs come out from the sides um, obviously trying to seat um, 
how many was it, 800 odd uh, people in the choir. Um, it was quite a challenge, um, but I think we did it, we pulled it off, and it was uh, wonderful. Yeah. Shut up! I'm so hungry! I gotta have a winter piece! <laughs> Will you knock it off? Well, I can just be one of those little sick ones! No, we wait for the signal from Scar. There he is. Let's go. The audience response to Simba's story was quite overwhelmingly positive. We received uh, rave reviews uh, from critics and audiences were consistently entertained and moved by the show, which was very great. Uh, most people told us that they'd never seen a live theater production that was so engaging and emotionally resonant. So that's a great thing. And the level of creativity exhibited in the arts, which are beyond the acting and the music, the visual arts were really top class, top notch. And special mention goes to the high school art teachers. These guys outdid themselves. They did really, really well considering the time frames that they had to work with. Pumba, I don't wonder. I know. Oh, really? What are they? Fireflies. Fireflies that got stuck up in that big bluish black thing. Oh, gee, I always thought that there were balls of gas burning billions of miles away. Pumba, with you, everything's gas. Hey, Simba, what do you think? Oh, uh, I don't know. Come on, give, give, give. We told you ours, please. Come on, come on, give, give. Uh, well, the biggest challenge was making the stage, I think. Um, so, uh, obviously, you've got to work with all the different people to when you put a production together. It's not just, oh, there's your stage, get on with it. You've got to work with the production people as well as we're doing the stage, but also understand, again, how everything's going to be placed. The biggest challenge was actually um, building it from scaffolding. Um, so, therefore, when you you're trying to tell people who are normally putting scaffolding up for buildings, this, this can become quite, quite a challenge because they, they don't quite understand when you're talking about how to tier seats. Well, the funniest thing, of course, afterwards, they said, oh, we should have done it like this. And I said, that, that would have been easier. Um, but that's, that, that is a learning curve, as we say. Simba, now that you've grown some, it's time that I teach you some lessons. I remember during re the rehearsals working with one particular young boy called Majrita who was in year six. We nicknamed Majrita Baby Director because he practically took over <laughs> the directing and he made my life easier. The child knew line by line of every cast member. So sometimes as a director, it's important to allow the children to lead from the front and you take a, a back seat. Because the moment you do that, you learn quite a lot. Oh Simba, just do me one favor. Yeah? Promise me, you will never visit that dreadful place. No problem. That's a good lad. Now, run along now. And remember, it's our little secret. <laughs> Okay, so uh, as we now look uh, post, post Simba story, um, which was a huge success by the way, um, I think there was a huge impact made on the audience and our audience obviously consisted of you know, the parents and we also had um, the students who were also participating but were also watching. Um, and I think the biggest thing is that lots more students are going to want to come and join drama because what has happened is they saw so imagine a, a year eight, year nine, who watched their head boy 
uh, being Simba or who watched you know uh, their rugby captain um, being Scar and I think that's made a huge impact on them because now they think you know drama is cool you know if, if if the head boy can do it then I can also do it so I think that's the first thing um, the second thing also I think there was a sense of unity that sort of prevailed um, across the, 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 the different departments because you know we had to work with the infants, we had to work with, with the juniors and obviously with the seniors and all of them really actually struck up a quite a, quite a nice relationship as they were, I think, um, working together, being part of the choir as well as just um, watching this, this story. Uh, so I think that's the second thing. And then thirdly, um, there are a lot of students that uh, quote, you know, quote unquote, uh, that don't fit in. Um, you know, it, in sport, or that don't really, you know, they're not really at the top of the classes, or they're not really, you know, the, the best sports people. And I think many of them found um, something that they enjoyed um, in, in Simba's story as well. So um, I think that that's, that's one impact that's, that, um, you know, that's one way that, that they were impacted by, by Simba's story. And I think they'll probably be trying to do more cultural things um, as opposed to not really contributing anything um, in, 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 in the school. Uh, I think our parents were quite impressed. Uh, this, these past few days it's just been positive comments um, and so I think a lot more parents are going to be um, attracted to these things, these, these cultural events. They're going to come and support more and support because remember it's every single student that was that was here so I think that they're going to be a little bit more supportive um, when it comes to to, to uh, the activities that we have here at the school and yeah I think it's been a great marketing tool for the school as well because everybody's talking about Simba's story so yeah I think that's the way that uh, that's that's the impact that um, the, the play has had on our audience. Thank you. 